Well, it's a freezing cold February morning. We're going on a 400 mile round trip journey to collect some equipment that's been donated to me. Uh, should we take the old car, Scotty? No, we should take that one because everyone knows that the 1994 Toyota Sleeker is the best car in the world. OK, let's take the new car. See you in a few hours. OK, so we've arrived. This is Fiona, who uh, has some equipment for me, uh, a viewer to my YouTube channel. And this is your beautiful dog. Ragamuffin. Right, and I believe he has a YouTube channel of his own. He does. Right, so um, uh, I'll link to that here. Worth watching. OK. <laughs> So we have some equipment to uh, collect. Uh, should we go and have a look and see what it is? Come on through. Right, go up in. Show them the way. So what do we have here? This. So uh, that I'm keeping on free. Yeah, of course. Uh, so you've you've got the Unicorn stand, which it's old, but it is so so good and functional. Yeah. And then there's the beater. I'm afraid it's not even um, a digi beater, but um, if people have. Uh, yeah, tapes, well, it's worth having. That's right, um, and that's a recorder as well, and I find the recorders are quite useful actually. Um, it is. Because one of the and things I do is I feed signals into them from other equipment, because that's got okay. um, balanced inputs and wave inputs, so yeah, I've, sure. I use yeah. that as part of the chain. Right, this I hope we can take to pieces to put in the car. Ah yeah. yes, Allen keys, I've got Allen keys, so we'll dismantle okay. them in a minute. Then, um, you've got the... <laughs> 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 He's trying to be helpful. Ragamuffin, come away. Come away, son. You've got the first deck. Oh, unbelievably Speakers. heavy. Wow. Yeah. You can tell that's no, gorgeous. Um, Ragamuffin, come away, mm -hmm. son. Yeah, the first decks. Oh. I mean, they are incredible, actually. I will use those in my studio. They yeah. will be better than what I've got. Now. They're very, very good. These are. Um, they used to be the old kind of um, speakers, you can put um, stuff in there. Oh yeah, yeah, I'd probably type things, um, yeah. Yeah, these are the, the remote, so mm. you need to buy the, or got those things, but I think lots of people have them. Um, so you've got the base for them and the oh, speakers, right, yeah. Yeah. and they're, that's really good. Okay, then, um, basically, Ah, the, um, the and the, all the cables and everything for the video. Do you know, these remotes, I think these are worth more than the video recorders. <laughs> they are quite hard to get. Well, that's, they might that's be. That's nice, that. Um, just like the little DV tapes. Yeah, yeah, they're still coming handy. Recordable, mm -hmm. you know. DVRs and RAMs, yes. Yeah, all that yeah. sort of stuff. And DV RAM, in case my viewers don't know, these are the ones that have got, <coughs> if you look at them, they've got a pattern on the back. So, um, they're kind of pre-formatted and that means you can edit them as you go along. So single-sided DVD RAMs and so, some oh, DVD and cam tapes. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> 40s, so I think they're mini DV cams. So though they come in these boxes that make them look like big tapes, actually what's inside is effectively a mini DV tape. It's more or less the same thing as that, mm. but uh, to a slightly higher tape specification. It is the Pelican cases. I think um, is worth more it's the contents, yeah. than the contents because the pelican cases, I mean, they are very <laughs> yeah, they're, they're sought decent, after yeah, yeah. because um, then, you can configure it to whatever you want, can't you? Um, exactly, but you can't, you can't hurt it. Mm. Um, so I've got two remotes to a very high end. Um, um, projector. This is, oh, well, I can't give you all the specs, but you'll find it. Mm. I mean, it's all in here. But that is. So that's um, YUV in, HDMI in, yeah. um, and analog um, RGB yeah. in, and S video as well. Yeah, and you got um, two bulbs. Really? Right. Because um, bulbs are the thing with these, aren't they? Yes, <laughs> and um, the bulbs so you've got expensive. a new one in there and a new one oh, here. Oh, my goodness, right. So, yeah, I mean, you've got. We don't know what we're going to use this for yet, do you, Scott? We were talking about it on the way. Yeah, no. But yet. Uh, we're looking forward to playing with it, aren't we? Yeah. Um, it's like major high lumen. I mean, mm. it's um, <clears throat> it's bright, really, right. really bright. Because mm. that's the key thing about them, isn't it? That yeah. some of them you can really only use in a darkened room. But sure, no, no, that is, right. and it's old, very oldish, but mm. quite old. Um, given on your age, probably as old as you, Scott. 
Um, but it works tremendously well. Right, lovely. And if it's well made, it can mm. hang around for ages. <laughs> Oh, in fact, you've got three bottles. Three bottles, right. One in there and, and two, two spares. Mm. Right, Scott, we've got to get this lot back into the car. So, presumably, we just need to find the right Allen key for these and uh, hopefully that'll come apart. <laughs> so, uh, good luck. Four millimetre Allen key, I think. No, it's not four. It's oh, I hope it's not Imperial. What make is it? I wonder if it might be, uh, if it was American, it might have used Imperial. That could be awkward. Oh no! We have a problem. Five millimetres too big, four millimetres too small. It must be Imperial. I didn't think to bring any Imperial ones. Oh no. Sorry. What are we going to do? Put the back seat down. Oh, we won't get it in that way. Oh no! Technical failure there, Scott. If I can get this to bite on any of them, I might be able to be able to split it at least. It didn't occur to me for a moment to bring any Imperial ones, so this must be American. Uh, uh, easily a big screw be. there. We've got screwdrivers, <coughs> so we can take the top off, maybe. Mm, no, it won't help much. No. Oh, what a disaster. Help him. Help him. You haven't got a four and a half millimetre shaped bone, have you? <laughs> I'm up and not helping. It probably came with an Allen key. Yeah, it's, well, it might have. You lost but... it in the mist of time. Oh, well, it's about yeah. 12 years old, so. Yeah. Uh. I won't be able to get, take it in. I won't be able to get in the car at all if you can't Ooh. get feet off. Well. It's not a hardware shop around here, is there? Could you, can you read this number for me, Scott? Okay. Um, 018 65. Hello, um, I, I'm very strange question, sorry to ask this. I'm on a customer's site and we've got a Unicol um, uh, rack here and we just need to move it. And we've hit a bit of a problem with the Allen bolts or the Allen the Allen key size required to undo the the um, the fittings. And I wonder if yeah. you knew what size they are. It seems to be somewhere yeah. between four and five millimeters. Three sixteen. Hold on. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is it imperial? Yeah. 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 Three sixteenths. Three sixteenths. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. That's a great help. Thanks okay. so much. Bye bye. Cheers then. Bye for now. Three sixteenths. Wait, if it's a UK company, why are they using Imperial? So, in case you don't want to know what three sixteenths is, Scott, that's sixteenths of an inch, three of them. <laughs> why do you... why? Why sixteen? That's such a weird number. That's what they used to use. So, um, we've I mean, got a problem. I mean, they still use it some, Yeah, some we've got reason. a problem. I'm very surprised they use that weird size. Yeah. So now we know what we need. Uh, so my idea is maybe using the pliers on the um, fitting to see yeah. if you're able to get it started. Get it started. Unlikely, but you know. You can try. Yeah. It's worth a shot. It works better than the Allen keys because it's in Imperial for some reason. Could you have a close look, Scott? And see if you can see if it rotates. It's not spinning. It's not. What? It just just ah, spinning. No. Yeah. They're helpful, though, aren't they? They were surprisingly helpful, but I think a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, we used three sixteenths. Yeah. Good heavens. Yeah, I'm, I've got Imperial fittings on my Hillman Avenger. That's 50 years old. Our only hope is to get hold of a three sixteenths Allen key. Right. Uh, well, at least know what size we need now. You're really sure it like We have tried everything, haven't we? Oh, I like it Do you know what? That's worked. But it has. Got that one off. One down, about ten to go. Yeah, some of these are a lot slacker. All right. Okay, we're making progress. Let's see how we can get on. Now, we suddenly started making a bit of progress. So if we got the Allen screws, would that help? Allen key, oh, it'd help a lot. Three sixteenth Allen key. 
That's what we need. Three sixteenths Allen key. Because, wait, are you using a four or a five? We're using the four. That one I couldn't shift. But we are making more progress than we were. Next one. Oh, Yay! Yeah. Well done, well, Charles. We well done. You hold it there and I'll take the bottom off. Well done. Thank you. Thanks. It was impressive that I was able to phone them up and they helped straight away. You know, there's just oh, the person no. on the reception knew I mean, what I was talking I, about. I think they're fabulous. Unicorn. I mean, I think they're fabulous. They were so helpful to me and to you. They're there. Mm. They're people. You don't have to go through yes. 17 layers of yeah. phone. And the fact that somebody, you know, straight away, I didn't have to get put through to some department <coughs> winning. No, they, yeah. they probably tell, like, uh, yeah... Um, the receptionist actually knows the knows information doing, about yeah. it instead yeah. of being like, oh yeah, I'll put you onto this person. Yeah. So uh, we think we have everything. Thank you for putting the uh, Alan. No, what are they? The screws. Rub screws yeah. in there, yeah. that's ideal. And we have all our tools. So we're going to uh, navigate our way back again. Thanks ever so much. It's been really appreciated. And you'll see all that equipment on YouTube very soon. Right, here's the video projector. Instructions we may need because we may have to do some setting up. Remote control, better check there's some batteries in there. No, right, we need some triple A's, Is that in a moment. The projector itself, which I think what we'll do to start with is just switch it on and see if it's got some test patterns uh, and get it set up on the wall we're going to use here. And cabling, we have a power cable, we have some spare bulbs, and an interesting SCART to S video and uh, RGB computer connector. Now, I don't know why that exists, so we'll have to look into that. And another remote control, I wasn't expecting two, they're the same. Right, let's uh, power it up and see what we get. Oh, quick start card. That could be useful. All right, lens cover off. It's powered up. Let's uh, see if we get anything on the wall. This is our one white wall that's handy in the kitchen. I'll just turn the lights down a bit. Still a fairly high light level in here. Right, power. So there's no input signal at the moment. I'm hoping it will uh, tell us. Aha, there's a fairly faint brand name. This is the remote that I put batteries into. Let's see if there's a menu. Okay, so this I believe is a focus control. Or is that a focus control? Oh, that's zoom. Aha, zoom and focus actually. So let's uh, make it a bit bigger. No, it's a very small adjustment on the zoom control. Okay, we'll go with that. So that's as large as I can make it with the projector this close. It's certainly clear though, isn't it? What do you think, Scott? Yeah. Quite clear, isn't it? Yeah, if you actually look at the um, camera, what it shows is it's like very flashy. Ah, right, okay. It's so the image we're getting is nice. That. All right, let's see if we can adjust that on the camera. Okay, Scott, what I've done is adjusted the shutter speed of the camera to get rid of that flicker you mentioned, uh, but it does mean I'm probably a bit of a blur. Right, so we've got this awaiting signal and we've got a JVC DVD recorder here. So uh, let's plug that in via HDMI. Aha, we have a messy signal. So let's... Um, See if that's a setup problem on the, yes, here we go. I think we're okay there. And we can see a little strange pink pattern at the bottom here, which I don't think should be there. And a little bit of what they call pincushion distortion, which means these edges are slightly higher than the middle. Can you see that? Pincushion shaped. So that's something we were able to adjust and uh, it's all disappeared again.
something a bit stripey about that, isn't there? There's vertical stripes. Uh, monitor type, no, not really. But we're looking for the output display type. No, not that display. Connection. Everything seems okay, but when you come out of the menu, it just goes to a scrambled mess. But that might be more to do with the DVD recorder than anything else. So it appears we don't have all the colors, doesn't it? Um, let's uh, go into the menus on here and see if there's a, something we can adjust to get the color right. HDMI output auto, there's an RGB fix. Let's try that. Oh, does that look more natural? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. It looks a lot better. Interestingly, we have this uh, set of dots along the top. Not sure what that's about. And there's no audio output as such. There's no speaker on here, I don't believe. Now, Scott, I want you to do something. Whilst you're looking at that, move your eyes quickly across the image and see if you see something happen when there's an image. <laughs> do you see something happen if you move your head? Oh, that's weird. Well, it has like, I can see like odd red, green, blue. Exactly, because you and I both have short oh, persistence of vision. That is weird. It's horrendous, isn't it? Oh, that is weird. If I move my eyes like left and right really class fast in the middle, I can see um, RGB. And even if, yeah, even if we do it with this image. Actually, it's not so bad it there. Work as well, no. no, but when you've got an actual image on there, it, it breaks it up because the way this works is it sends out a red and a green and a blue version of the image one after the other. Uh, which a lot of people can't see, but you and I have a short persistence of vision. And if you come over here and have a look, don't look, don't look at, directly at that, but just catch it in the corner of your eye. Oh, well, yeah. It's yeah, flashing yeah. colours. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, but and it, it makes you feel quite ill, doesn't if it? If I move in like the corner of my eye, I can see, yeah. So how would you feel about watching a movie on this? Do you think you could watch a movie on that, or would it give you a headache? I mean, I can. It's just like I can't move my eyes very fast. You have to look, keep looking at the screen. And usually you'd have it further away, so it's a bigger image, so you would have to look across the image. Something else I notice here is it's chucking out a lot of heat here, because there's a, an actual old-fashioned lamp in there, and a fan to keep the lamp from getting too hot. So, yes, it's hot. Are there adjustable feet on this thing? No. So we've dimmed the lights in the room and pulled the projector back so that we get a larger image. Oh, we didn't reset focus so we can do that. I would say that the image is... Oh look, one thing it doesn't like, it doesn't like it if it's not pointing straight at the wall. So I was sitting on something here uh, and that's probably not a good idea. It probably needs to be pointing straight. I would say it's possibly better for computer use or for showing images than it is for showing films because I think that refresh, the RGB refresh, is uh, distracting. Yeah. What do you think of the black level, Scott? Huh? The black level. How black are the blacks? Um, Not very. No. And that's it's because gray. of the ambient it's room, like the ambient light in the room, and that's I think the big problem with projectors is that you need a, a really dark room to get nice blacks. I think another problem is the noise, don't you, Scott? Yeah, you can actually loud. hear it. So, okay, we haven't got any speakers connected up for the, for the audio, but you're always going to hear the sound of that fan running. I mean, it's loud, but at the same time, if we were actually listening to a movie, you w it would probably drown out a lot of that it, noise. It would a lot of the time, but it could ruin the suspense a little bit in some quiet shots. Yeah. 
And uh, here's our other concern. Why do we have this dot pattern at the top? And is there anything we could do to eliminate that? I think the other thing that's abundantly obvious is that the size of the pixels is huge compared to a modern, say, 4K TV. And there's a distinct squares between the pixels. Let's have a look at these speakers. When I first saw them, I incorrectly assumed that they were some sort of stereo pair, but they're not. These are mono, and I believe they only work as mono, so there's an input there, and this one has an output. But that's not like this is the left channel and you run it uh, slave right channel. This is just mono, and that's for use with a separate speaker, use this as an amplifier. So, kind of limits their usefulness to me, but still, let's have a play with them. So, uh, the weight is incredible. Let's uh, plug this in and first just confirm that it uh, powers up. Okay. I'll feed it with a signal. So I need a quarter inch jack. This is a stereo one, but presumably that's designed really for mono. So I've done this correctly, I should be able to play something from this player and get one channel of it on the speaker. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear that. The speaker cone's blown on this one. Can you hear the crackling sound? I'm sure that's not due to any configuration error here. seems to have cleared itself, so it might have been something stuck in the cone, but it was making a rasping noise characteristic of a faulty speaker cone earlier. I think I still detect it, actually. Yeah, I think I still detect it. Yeah, there's that distinctive sound of a a failed cone. Should we have a quick look inside? If it'll come apart. I'm assuming these are the screws I need to undo. So it's a Fostex Model 6301. Taking those screws off didn't do anything. I'm a little bit cautious about doing too many screws because I may end up releasing something internally. Yeah, I don't believe they're the ones I need to do. So it's not obvious how it comes apart and of course if I was to uh, attempt a repair of this thing that I would need to do so a uh, little disappointing that one doesn't seem to be much use as it stands not sure I can really repair it I wonder why it's so heavy um, it feels like it doesn't need to be as heavy as it is and they're probably kind of put a weight in there but there will be a transformer I'm sure but it just seems um, like they wanted it to have some substance rather than it needs that much weight now the other one we have here model 6301B has balanced input and the strangest power connector I've ever seen I don't know if other people are used to this what's a live neutral and a tiny little earth pin in the middle there is this really the right connector for mains? I don't know. I'm not sure I'd want to use that for mains, really. So we need a balanced input cable. And I've got a balanced to unbalanced cable here, so I can connect that to my player. Let's try that one. Power it up. Bit of crackle on the volume control there. Lots of crackle. That seems a lot better, that one. 
So if I could just maybe pull the volume control off. Wonder if I can get to the control, the uh, potentiometer underneath. This one has these uh, Allen bolts at the front. I wonder what happens if I undo those. Can I take the front panel off? Let's give that a go. Three millimeter, none of this uh, three sixteenths nonsense. Well, at least this plate is coming off. Does it give us any access to anything underneath? Not much. Oh, get that control off now. So the only thing stopping me taking that off earlier was this flange was colliding with the metal plate. Um, I still don't have much access to this, but I might be able to get some uh, deoxit in there, maybe. Oh, I don't think so, no, because I'm very much sitting at the front of this. Hmm. Unless this pulls out. Give that a go. Okay, I can get to the potentiometer now. I think the cone roll over here, the front of the cone, I think is start the foam is starting to fail. I've changed that on a speaker once before. Uh, yeah, it feels like it's going a bit gooey, so uh, may not live long. Let's uh, see what we can do with that control. So deoxit. This is um, an American manufacturer of switch cleaner. It's not particularly easy to get in the UK. Certainly not cheap. Let's see if that's helped. Bit of care because I think that's the main switch there. Yes. That's removed all the crackle. Oh, inside we can see um, a big heavy transformer and a pretty big magnet on the speaker as well. So that's where the weight's coming from and the case itself. So that one's working fine now. No crackle, no speaker rattle. Uh, that was last uh, safety tested in 1998. Gives you an idea of the age of this unit. I see there were some different versions. So that's this one, balanced line. There was an unbalanced, which presumably similar to the one we looked at earlier, and a mic input type. Right, we have some speakers here. So there's uh, two satellite speakers and the amplifier, which may or may not be also the base unit. And that requires DC in, but it's not marked what DC in. And we don't have the power supply. Use only the recommended power supply, oh dear. 13 volts, three amps, and we are not given the polarity. Uh, now I have a connector which I think fits. And I'm assuming that the ground point here on the speaker is the ground point on the power connector, though that's not a certainty. So let's look at the outer conductor. Okay, and inner. So that says it is center positive and the outer conductor is negative. Let's uh, configure the power supply for that. Okay, I have about 12 and a half volts center positive. We have a light on of some sort. Bit of mains hum. These remote controls, I think they need new batteries. 2032, I think that's the correct one. Ah, the on off button's working. Does volume work? Volume down works. OK, 
Okay, these controls, of course, track skip ones will only work with an eye, what have you. Okay, so they are working as speakers. Um, now, Fiona said, I think she thought that this was a base unit and these are satellites, but I'm not detecting any base unit operation from this one. I don't believe so. So they're just two-way speakers, no base unit. So the sound quality is uh, a little boxy, actually. They're not uh, particularly good quality speakers. These are monitor audio, amplified speaker system, iDeck. Don't give you any more information than that. Yeah, very average, I'd say, actually. But uh, maybe I'd find use for them. A quick look at some of the media that was donated to me. So there's some CDs and DVDs, which are not particularly useful today, though, though these are CDIWs I could possibly use for something, such as recording uh, music for a car. Um, so, yes, OK, we have some of those. Then there's mini DVD-Rs. So these are typically used in... Uh, camcorders and see there's minus and plus RWs there uh, so some camcorders could take both plus and minus type discs um, again not particularly useful today but one or two people might still be using DVD camcorders uh, so mini DV tapes um, now as well as these Sony mini DVs we have DV cam mini DV cam so a 40 minute DV cam tape is effectively a 60 minute mini DV tape so that will run in a normal camcorder a more normal mini DV one for an hour but I believe there are very slightly higher quality uh, lower dropout uh, formulation and they come in these rather nice boxes uh, and this uh, well, I love these. DAT. I'm a great fan of DAT. So uh, I have some DAT machines. I'm sure I'll find a use for that one. Uh, some more assorted DVDs. Oh, DVD RAM. Right, so we've mentioned these before. These are the ones that have patterns on the underneath. But do these come in a caddy? Some DVD RAMs are provided in a caddy. Right, so it says they are DVD RAM Type 2, so they come in a caddy, looks like a giant floppy disk, but you can remove them from the caddy. If we look at that, you'll see the, the patterning underneath, and it gives you instructions here on how to remove the disk from the caddy shell, but obviously you pay extra for that. So uh, they're quite unusual. Uh, DVD-RAM is still usable today on certain DVD recorders. I have JVC and Panasonic DVD recorders that take DVD-RAM. But these Caddy ones that were designed for those decks that only took, uh, typically computer ones, only took these uh, Caddies in that uh, construction, um, they're relatively unusual and what you'd have to do if you didn't have a disc supplied in this you'd have to put your disc in here which you kind of defeated the object the object was to minimize the chance of fingerprints on the discs so they're quite unusual and there's some piles of uh, DVDs here of one sort or another and CDs oh let me just tell you something about these boxes do keep yourself one of these boxes if you can and cut this spigot off and fill up the hole and then if you have a bug in your house or a spider or something creepy crawly in your house you put that over it you slide that under without this you can entrap it and take it out the front door and throw it out and get rid of your bugs so that's my not yet patented uh, bug catching tool as for the equipment stand, uh, I now have a 5 16 Allen key and the uh, grub bolts, if you like, seem to have survived with uh, little or no damage from having had uh, the wrong size Allen key rammed in them in order to dismantle it. So I can put this together now. Well, the Unicol stand had more shelves than I needed for what I'm using it for and this isn't the final configuration anyway, but uh, it's uh, certainly come in handy and uh, will help support this heavy equipment. Okay, that's almost everything. The one remaining item is the Betacam SP recorder. But it turns out 
that needs a video of its own. So we'll do that one separately. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed what we've done so far, and I'll have plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.